Hey everyone, welcome back to Roses Year of One. If this is your first time to my channel, last year I did a no buy year and this year I'm doing my Year of One project which is where I am allowed to buy one thing a month as a way of reintroducing spending and consuming into my life but hopefully keeping it under control and not allowing it to become the problematic way that I used to spend ever again. If that kind of balance, trying to consume and indulge my love in the things that I do enjoy like fashion and beauty and generally aesthetically pleasing things, please do consider subscribing to my channel. Just at the start of this video, if you hear any strange noises, my cat was lying very quietly all the time that I was getting ready. You know, she was asleep with her face properly smooshed into my bed and since I've decided to start filming she has decided to start making noise so if you hear any strange noises um, or you hear like the little bell on her collar it's it's her in the background um, so just to give you a heads up on that. Today we are doing my Edinburgh haul and ranking it so this is overdue I went to Edinburgh last year and one of the exceptions under my no buy was that I could buy things when I was on holiday. One of the things that I have changed this year is that I can no longer go on holiday and shop freely. I can now only buy one thing for every day of the holiday because as much as I generally think I shop well on holiday, when I looked back at what I'd spent in Edinburgh, I couldn't actually remember a lot of what I'd bought. I could remember my one big item that I bought that I planned to buy, but I couldn't remember where the rest of the money had gone um, and that really informed this year's project because it really showed me that the things that I am conscious of buying are those bigger purchases that I really do consider and the things that I forget about and probably therefore shouldn't buy in the first place are those small impulse purchases. We're going to go through everything that I bought, I'm going to talk you through what I spent on it, how I feel about it now and then at the end of the video I'm going to do what I did with my London haul last year where I'm going to rank it in terms of if I had to give things back, what order would I give things back in? What would I be most likely to part with and what would I be least happy to part with? Um, and then I'm also going to go through how often these things have been used to see if there's a difference between the thing that I am the most excited about and the least willing to part with versus what have I actually used the most? Because I think that's a big thing that I need to reflect on and I imagine if I do, a lot of people are the same where you can Marie Kondo things and you can you can look at that in terms of that spark joy principle but for me the things that spark joy are not necessarily the practical things that I actually will get my money out of and that I think needs to be more of a consideration in my head when I am shopping and when I am choosing what to bring into my life like what is going to have value in my life and what is going to be beautiful and excite me and, th and that is not to discredit that when you bring something beautiful into your life even if it doesn't have function it can be like a beautiful piece of art that just brings you joy and that is sometimes all things need to do in your life but you need to balance that with things buying things that you're actually going to use because there's no point in having 50 ball gowns if you wear jeans and trainers every single day. Let's get on into the whole part of the video. The first thing that I bought was my Mulberry handbag. So this was what I planned to buy and it is the Seton and it was reduced in their summer sale. So it was down to £697 from over a thousand. So obviously it comes with its dust bag. It is so beautiful. This is the bag itself. So it's this beautiful sort of gingerbread colour. I just absolutely love it. This is like my favourite shade of lipstick as well. Um, I'm so attracted to this colour. That was really... I love the shape of the bag and they do it in a green crock as well, which I would like to own at some point. You know, I like the top handle. One of the things I was a bit concerned about was whether this would kind of pull. And when there is quite a lot of stuff in the bag the top does pull up against this a little bit like if you guys can see so when I'm holding that like that it's fine and then it does lift slightly here and the more that you've got in the bag the more it does lift just in terms of the bag itself that doesn't particularly bother me and I do think it is absolutely stunning I have no regrets about purchasing this bag I'm using it mainly with the top handle as you can see from the fact that the strap is not on it but you do get a strap with it, which 
if you choose to use it attaches on here and here um, and you can use it as a crossbody bag but I love it as a top handle I think it's so beautiful it's so structured it's not dissimilar to the coach bag that I bought in Florida in 2019 you know in terms of the shape and size so I knew already from that that I loved this kind of structure of bag um, but it was really the colour that absolutely tipped me over into buying this one. I just thought it was so beautiful and it's quite a rich colour and it's a warm colour but it complements so many different tones because it's still in that sort of brown family although it's that orangey rusty gingerbready brown. It is kind of brown enough that it just blends in with a lot of other things. That was my first purchase, I absolutely love it and that was my first purchase it was the only purchase I planned to make before going, like I knew when we went to Edinburgh I was going to go and buy this bag. I looked at it in the shop in Glasgow but obviously couldn't buy it in Glasgow under my no buy but I could buy it on holiday under my exceptions and it was the very first thing that I did when we went to Edinburgh was I went to the Mulberry shop and I bought this bag and I put it on hold ahead of me going as well so that I knew it wouldn't sell out. That was my planned purchase, it was my very first purchase and it was the majority of what I spent while I was away. The next thing that I got, I don't have to show you, I filmed some cutaways of them, was a pair of Superbas and they were £50 exactly which I feel like is slightly less than I expected them to be. I, maybe there was money off them or something um, or maybe there wasn't and I just have the expectation wrong in my head but they were £50 exactly is what I paid for them um, because I recorded it in my spreadsheet obviously and as you will see from the cutaways I have worn them so much and um, I have worn away the heels at the back I actually got new ones for Christmas because those ones are so dirty now I'm still going to keep them and I'm still going to use them when the weather gets better to go out walking in again that was really how I ended up kind of wearing right through them as they just became my go-to shoes for when I was doing my walking and walking for hours a day kind of thing Um, so I did wear through them pretty quickly they were actually my second pair of Supergas as well so the ones I got for Christmas are now my third pair. I really love a white canvas trainer, it just matches everything. My feet are quite wide so often if I get like a leather shoe, if it's a little bit too narrow, I have to go through this phase of it loosening off and um, that can be quite painful. I feel like the Supergas have a little bit more give to them to start with but I feel like they're also wider. They are an Italian brand and I generally find Italian shoes slightly wider which suits my fat feet. I absolutely love them. I'm now on to my third pair. This pair in question was my second pair. The only thing I would say is my third pair. I asked my parents to get me the children's ones um, which were £30 and having tried them on, so these are the, the new ones that I got for Christmas because I thought if, if they weren't right I could obviously change them. Um, so having compared these to my other ones they are exactly the same. If you are a smaller foot do consider the children's ones. I'm a UK 4 or a European 37 and these were £30 and I think my grand got them in John Lewis. I will link them down below but it's just a little heads up that if you are smaller of foot their children's sizes go up to I think a 4 or a 5 and they do seem to be pretty much the exact same as an adult size 4. I'm a little bit conflicted about the Supergas just because I, I am now on my third pair and I do wear them out so I feel like environmentally that can't be great but at the same time the reason I wear them out is because I get them and then they become my go-to shoe. I feel like particularly last year I really moved away. I used to wear like ballet pumps all the time as my day-to-day -day shoe whereas I feel like in the last year or so it's become a, I've become a white plimsoll kind of person. I like them with dresses, I like them with jeans. I just like the aesthetic of them. They match in with everything. I actually really like wearing them with like like a wide leg like smart trouser and then like a t-shirt and a pair of uh, like canvas plimsolls and I feel like that's quite a kind of smart but casual look in terms of my workplace that's quite acceptable workwear. Yeah I get a lot of wear out of them and as you can see I've worn them pretty much right through so I will keep them um, and I'll use them until the last ones out literally like the heel ripped apart by the time I was done with them. And I'll probably keep those ones until the heels rip apart again, um, which is the downside of the canvas trainers is they are going to wear out 
more quickly than like a leather trainer but I do really really like them and the next thing I got was another pair of shoes and this was a pair of boots from Clark's and these were £105. I have these already in black leather. I got them at the start of 2020 and I wore them pretty much every day. So buying the brown ones then seems like a very sensible purchase to make. As it is, because 2020 turned out the way that it did, oh, just dropped one of them. Because 2020 turned out the way that it did, I didn't get as many opportunities to wear these as I would have liked to. I have worn them. Um, but only a handful of times. However, I do think going into 2021 when it comes round to winter at the other end of the year, because I don't think we're going to be doing much socialising this winter, as in like the January, February months, I do think I will wear these quite often. Um, and they've now brought them out in a sort of light tan colour that I also really like, like fluffy on the inside, they're very warm. I really really like them um, and I've worn the black ones so much that I honestly I would quite like a backup of the black ones. I don't regret buying these but I've definitely not had as much use from them as I expected to but it is what it is. The next three things that I got I don't have to show you because they have been used. So the first was a sheet mask, it was by Simple and it was like a calming one it was in one of my empties that was two pounds and then I got two bath bombs from Lush so I bought a Twilight bath bomb and a Goddess bath bomb the Twilight one was 3 95 and the Goddess was 5 95 all three of those products were bought because I didn't realise the hotel we were staying in had a bath um, I feel like more and more I've been turning up at hotels and you know it's, it's a shower that you get and not a bath I suppose it's space saving but I suppose it's a bit more modern as well and whatever and because this was quite a modern hotel I wasn't expecting it to have a bath because I feel like it's only really the older hotels that I've gone to in the past number of years that have had baths so wasn't expecting a bath. Turned up and they had one and I hadn't brought anything with me from my sort of bath product stash so I bought the face mask and two bath bombs so that I could have a bath and you know do a face mask and whatever else kind of thing whilst I was away so I bought them to use on holiday and I used them whilst I was there so I don't have them to actually hold up and show you them in this video. In terms of how I feel about buying them like a sheet mask is a sheet mask, a £2 one from Simple, it is what it is, it's not breaking the bank, it's absolutely fine and the bath bombs like I regret that I had to buy them because I have bath stuff in my stash and if I'd known that there was going to be a bath I would have taken stuff with me rather than buying them um, but I, d I enjoyed using them and that's you know it's easy I think when you're trying to cut down your shopping or whatever to look at things and go like oh I could have just done without that and you could all you could have done without it maybe but it doesn't mean you didn't enjoy doing with it yeah that I if I had known the bath was going to be there I wouldn't have bought those things because I would have taken things with me but I enjoyed using them whilst I was away. The next thing I bought very excitingly was a comb. It was five pounds, it's by Mark Hill. It's this one here and I didn't have like a white tooth comb and I was getting really into doing like 1920s finger waves that you need to then brush out but if you brush them out they can get really really fluffy um, if I was using like my wet brush or whatever. So I got this so that I could use it for that but it's just become super useful. I use this pretty much every day. I Like I used it today um, to brush out my hair before I started filming. Um, I just really really like it for being able to kind of brush my hair out without flattening it because if I brush my hair too much it very much doesn't hold the style, it will drop. I feel like this is a way to kind of brush it out and freshen it up a little bit or smooth it down but without taking the style away which is sometimes what happens if I use an actual hairbrush and I use it in the shower as well if I've got like a hair mask I'll like comb it through with that and then I can rinse it off because it's just plastic and um, so it cleans off really easily so a bit of a boring purchase but actually a very very useful one that I'm very glad I made and then the last three things I bought were three NARS lipsticks that were all on sale so these were on all reduced from £26 to £19 and it's three of the Audacious lipsticks and I say this every time 
but the formula moves so much like I've got Carmen on um, today so if there's red lipstick all around the sides of my mouth it's because this formula just goes for a walk um, I don't have particularly big lips which is also I think part of it to get into it so two of them were reduced because they were in last year's Christmas packaging which was this a Studio 54 theme that they did in Christmas 2019 and it was still hanging around the shops in summer 2020 when I went away. So I got the shades Carmen which is what I've got on my lips today. So that is a bright red and I actually got this, I got this dress for my birthday and when I saw this and also totally influenced by the fact that it's called Carmen and Lana Del Rey has a song called Carmen which I really enjoy. But I'd got this dress that has, it's black with all this sort of embroidery that goes right down the whole dress and I thought the red lipstick would really pick out the embroidery and it, like the embroidery is sort of Spanishy looking as well so the fact it was called Carmen, it all just kind of added up. It's not like I didn't own any other red lipsticks that I could have used but it just appealed to me that it all sort of fitted in so, so that is it swatched there for you. And then the other one in the Studio 54 packaging was Jane, which I've already shown you because I, it was in my last, um, my Christmas decluttered I think it was, uh, when I used it and was therefore considering it for decluttering. So I had this already, I had it in the normal packaging but it was really old and it kind of dried out so I just bought this one to replace it. It's a sort of beautiful terracotta shade so that is that one there. And I do love the colours of these, that is why I get drawn, even though I find the formula difficult and you have to like keep an eye on it, I do think the audacious colours are beautiful. And the last one is one that is being discontinued, so it's just in normal packaging but it was still reduced. And it's called Shirley and it's a really deep red, so that is that one at the bottom there. So the three of them are lovely. I definitely need to stop buying these because I buy them, I love them and then I complain about them every time I wear them but I am so drawn in every single time because the pigmentation and the colours are just so beautiful and I was really, I wanted to replace Jane anyway so I knew that there was, the packaging had gone on sale so I was a bit like I'll replace Jane so that was why I was at the counter and then the name of Carmen just, that it, it's the name it's totally marketing with these audacious lipsticks. It's the names, it's starting to assign a personality to the lipstick based on the name. Um, I think it's like the same thing that gets me about perfume. It's that like story and that everything you start attributing to it that is nothing to do with what the core function of the product is. It's all the packaging and the name and the story and that's what gets me in about these lipsticks. Um, is starting to imagine like who Carmen is or who Jane is or who Shirley is and you know what you're channeling when you wear their lipstick. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But yeah so that was the last three things that I bought. So that was 10 items in total that I purchased. Three lipsticks, the comb, two bath bombs, face mask, handbag, trainers, boots, 10 items and I spent £926 in all together. Okay so let's get into the ranking exercise. So first of all I'm going to go through giving things back. So the first thing I would give back down to the very last thing that I would part with if I had to start giving this stuff back. If I had to undo the purchases this is the order I would undo them in. I think the first thing I would give back would be the sheet mask that I bought because I have other sheet masks and I've got masks and tops and stuff so as much as I did enjoy having my bath and using my sheet mask it, it wasn't essential and I have other sheet masks at home that I can use so I feel like I would give back the sheet mask first. Okay the second and third things I would give back are the bath bombs from Lush. I was sort of debating would I give back one of the lipsticks before giving back the bath bombs but I think I would give back the bath bombs if I could undo my purchases because they are all sort of one use items that got used on holiday. They were joyous to use whilst I was using them but they were fleeting. They're not bringing me a kind of longer joy that the other items will bring so I feel like 
yeah, if I had to give back things, I don't have those things to give back now, but that is the order I would undo the purchases in, would be the face masks and then the two bath bombs. Then the next thing, I feel like maybe the next thing I would give back would be the lipstick in Shirley, which is the deeper red, just because I do have quite a few deep reds. This was definitely an impulse purchase. I did not plan to make this purchase. I really bought this because it was reduced, like let's be honest about it, I wouldn't have bought this had it not been on sale. But I was buying the other two and I just ended up being like, oh I'll just throw this one in. And I again was affected by the name because like I loved Anne of Green Gables when I was younger so I was like, oh it's like Anne, like Anne Shirley, blah blah blah. blah. Basically I probably bought it for wrong reasons so I feel like I would give that back next if I had to. Although this is what's really quite difficult. I think after that I would maybe give back Jane, which is this one. So ironically this was the one I'd sort of planned to buy because I had it already and it just it definitely expired, it totally dried up. So I re replaced that but I got for my birthday from Charlotte Tilbury I got, I want to say Karina's Star, wait I have a list of what I got for my birthday because I, I recorded everything I brought into my life in 2020. Oh, I've just written Charlotte Tilbury lipstick so that's unhelpful. I want to say it's Karina Star, it's the one that's in the sort of Zodiac packaging that's not JK Magic because I didn't want to buy the one that was JK Rowling's because we've fallen out with her and I, I feel like it's Karina Star but either way again it was in the declutter that I considered decluttering this in and when I swatched the two of them next to each other in my head they're completely different lipsticks because I feel like I think of this as being like a terracotta -y nude and I think of that as being like a peachy shade but they're actually quite close so although I've actually worn this probably the most of all the lipsticks um, because I use this a lot around Christmas I feel like this is probably the next thing I would give back and then I feel like then it would have to be the Carmen lipstick. I was debating there whether I would give back the trainers or the lipstick but I'd, oh, I love the fact it's called Carmen though and it's the Del Rey song and this dress and the whole thing going on. I could wear another lipstick it's not in and I literally just looked in the mirror in the bathroom when it was washing off my arm and like it's moved but I, I, I just like the fact it's called Carmen. It's so about the name and the marketing. Like that's the, the key thing. But yeah, I would probably have to give this back next. Unhappy about it, but that's probably how I would do it. Excuse me, I've got my comb, the trainers, the boots and the bag. I feel like I would next give back the comb. I've used this a lot, but I could make do with my wet brush. In fact, you know what, I'd give back the comb before I'd give back Carmen. So I'd give back the comb, then I'd give back Carmen actually. But yeah, I feel like I have alternatives to the comb. It's been very useful and I'm really glad I have it, but I own other things that kind of do a similar job and I can work with them. So I would give back the comb and then I would give back Carmen lipstick. And that leaves me my trainers, my boots and my bag. I feel like I'd have to give the trainers back because I've got other trainers. As much as I really like those ones because they're just plain white canvas. Obviously I do really like them because I'm now onto my third pair of them. Yeah, I feel like I would have to give the trainers back because I've got other things that I could wear in place of those trainers. Like those are the ones I would choose but I've got like my Veja trainers for example which I love arguably more than I love my Supergas actually but I can't get a backup of them so I'm trying to keep them good and I don't just want to wake. Again, they're just like white canvas trainers so they're going to get wrecked at some point but I don't want to be wearing them like going out my daily walk whereas I feel like the Supergas are a bit more expendable but if I had to give stuff back and that would knock me down to only keeping my boots in my bag, I'd rather keep the boots in the bag than the trainers and I would rather have to just use some of my other trainers so I think I'd give the trainers back next and then it would be the boots which I don't want to give back because I don't actually have any other like nice brown boots 
that I've got like brown walking boots like for proper hiking boots. They're not pretty whereas I feel like like I wore those boots on Christmas Eve for example with my tartan skirt and I just I really really like them and they keep my feet warm and they're really cute. So yeah. I wouldn't be very happy about it but that's the second to last thing I would give back would be the boots and that would mean if I could only keep one thing I'd be keeping my handbag and that is the last thing I would part with. So the thing about this whole haul is that the handbag is all I think about when I think about buying things in Edinburgh. Like see when I look at this list I remember buying everything, I remember why I bought it and there's some of them like the comb and the trainers for example that I've almost forgotten that I bought them in Edinburgh because they've become in a way so much part of my daily life that I almost like I don't think of them as being like a special purchase so I don't recall where I picked them up from does that make sense so it's not that I regret buying all the other stuff but that is why I decided to limit my holiday purchases this year to being one thing for every night that I'm away on holiday because all of those other things I don't even remember buying as much as I enjoyed buying them and now that I'm looking at them and there's none of them that I do really want to give back like I enjoy owning all of these things so it's not that I want to give them back but the fact I couldn't recall off the top of my head anything other than the handbag having been bought when I was in Edinburgh just speaks for itself I think about the amount of consideration, the fact I did plan the handbag ahead of time, I did phone up, reserve it and it was the first thing that I bought and it was the thing I was most excited to buy. That's what stuck in my head and everything else over time with a bit of distance has been kind of forgotten about. But having said that, the handbag is not my most used part of this haul. So let's go through this in order of the most used to least used. I think actually the most used thing is this comb um, because I use this pretty much daily more or less and then the second thing is the Superga trainers. They got worn a lot, you can see how well worn they are but as soon as it's got into the colder weather I've been wearing um, my boots and things so they've stopped being worn so because of that the comb which obviously has continued through all weathers um, is, is the most used item and then it's those trainers. Then the third thing that I have used is the handbag. That is definitely the, yeah, because I used the hand, like when lockdown lifted and you could take the bag places and I used the bag whilst I was away. Um, so the bags definitely had the next sort of, not a lot of uses granted, but the bag's definitely been the next sort of most used thing. And behind that, I would say NARS Jane lipstick has then been the next most used and after that we're really kind of getting into the things that have not been used very much at all so I would say next is probably the Clarks boots so I have worn them a handful of times but definitely not as much as I would have envisioned had there not been a lockdown right before Christmas and had I been like maybe meeting friends and stuff because I do think I would have because I wore the black one so much at the start of the year continued to wear the black ones with outfits that they matched with and I feel like the outfits that I would have worn that the browns want ones would have matched with I would have been wearing more had lockdown not been a thing basically so I, I do feel I didn't get as much wear out of them so they're further down the list than they ideally should be for the price of them but I do think they will I don't regret them because I do think had last year been different they would have been further up this list so I think they're my next most used. After that so that's leaving me so comb, trainers, bag, jean, boots. So I think next after that it would then be Carmen which I've worn a handful of times again not as much as Jean and probably not as much as I'm saying a handful probably worn about four times really including today so Carmen is the next most used thing but it's not been used very much at all. And then we're down to, I've worn Shirley once, I wore it and I filmed in it so I remember, I remember putting it on to film a video, that's the only time I've used that lipstick. And then I also obviously also only got one use out of the face mask and each of the bath bombs. So the last four things in that haul were all 
one use items. Um, it's kind of a bit misleading because in a way those three items that are designed to be one use items I've had 100% of the usage life of them so as a percentage of their life I've used more of them than I've used of other things but in terms of like just quantity of usage they were used once but they've been finished once whereas this lipstick has been used once and will now be in my stash for a very long time. So that's how I have actually utilised things versus how excited I have been about things. I feel like it's all interesting, I feel like it's all knowing this and looking at it and analysing it like that, it all helps inform future choices. Even when I was in Edinburgh, as much as there are things that I'm saying I would give back, there's nothing I can honestly stand here and be like, I regret buying it. I don't regret buying any of them. But because I had done my London haul and done the ranking of my London haul in terms of how excited I was about things, there were things that I nearly bought in Edinburgh that I didn't because I was thinking that I would film this video and I would rank them. And it meant even as I was going along, as much as I get sucked in and make the impulse purchase of this lipstick and to an extent Carmen when I was at the NARS counter, I was thinking about ranking things as I went along. So there was like things in like H&M and Zara that I didn't buy because I was a bit like, I do like it but I know for a fact if I was ranking it, it would be near the bottom. And it did stop me from making impulse purchases in some cases that probably if I was standing here now, I would be like, mm, yeah, I bought this dress in Zara and I haven't worn it because we've not been anywhere to wear it kind of thing. So it wouldn't have been a practical choice to fit into my life as it has been for the last year because of the pandemic and it, it is hard as well to say that because it's like those boots the, the wearing of them and the ability to wear them has been impacted by the pandemic but it's a case of taking note of that and saying you know when the weather gets cold again after summer and hopefully by then the vaccines rolled out and we are back to you know socializing and being out and about it's about taking note and saying, oh, but remember, although those boots are a year and a half old, they've only been worn a handful of times. Like, they're basically new in terms of usage. So it's about remembering that and not going out and buying another pair of boots this winter. Does that make sense? I hope this has been enjoyable. I hope you liked seeing what I bought and what I thought of it in retrospect. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.